South Africa, from a marine point of view, is incredibly fortunate. We have a very long coastline of over three and a half thousand kilometers. And within that coastline, we have a number of bioregions. So these are environments that specifically have very defined habitat. So I'll go Bay and the regions around it, which are in the Agullas bioregion, is particularly rich in marine biodiversity and especially so with the marine organisms on the ocean floor. Um, the sponges and sea squirts and corals and soft corals, etc. And specifically the bacteria that live with them, so their microbes. And it's really important that we, we acknowledge how important that biodiversity is because the more biodiversity you have, the better your chances are of discovering something new. So to explain the sea to laboratory process, we go out into the field and then we use equipment known as remote operating vehicles or ROVs. And the ROV has really good camera equipment and video equipment and we can then use that to identify sponges or sea squirts or organisms that are down there that are potentially of interest for us for research purposes. And then we use a robotic arm on the ROV so that we can specifically collect the specimens we're interested in in a non-destructive way without damaging the reef habitats. And we also make sure that we're not taking the only, the only specimen that is there. And then we also take samples for a DNA analysis. And the DNA that we isolate is used to potentially identify the, the genes that the bacterium uses to make those, that chemistry. We call it gene mining. We will then use genetic engineering to see whether we can persuade a bacterium that grows in the laboratory, such as Escherichia coli, our gut bacterium, and persuade this bacterium to produce the compounds we're interested in the lab. And the compounds we have are also screened in our collaborating labs for anti-cancer activity and for potential inhibitory activity against malaria and other parasites. So the compounds that we get from the sea those don't necessarily end up in the pharmacy, but what they do is they give us ideas about what kind of compound can be used to target these diseases so that we can go into the lab and develop these ideas into fully fledged pharmaceutical compounds that can be tested and put into clinical trials. The purpose of the work that we're doing is to explore the, the sponge species that are in our environment, and particularly in Algoa Bay. And so in the marine world, your biggest problem is defending yourself against predators and pathogens, especially if you're a sponge and you're attached to the ocean floor. And sponges defend themselves by producing toxic chemicals. They live with what are known as bacterial symbionts. These are microbes that have evolved over millions of years. And like the E. coli that we have in the human gut, the symbionts produce all kinds of interesting chemicals. And we are interested in those chemicals because they offer us ideas of how we can go about designing new antibiotics and new antiviral compounds and look to see what chemicals they produce and then screen those chemicals for biological activity. And if we find something that's really interesting, then go back into the chemistry lab and start making those compounds and adapting those compounds so that they potentially can go through into being developed as therapies for the diseases that we've identified. So one of my 10-year goals is to establish the Eastern Cape as the place you want to work in if you want to be in the field of marine science and drug discovery. So one of the major things that motivated me to be part of this research was looking at um, the emergence of antimicrobial resistance being a global problem. And I was given this opportunity to be part of this research group to contribute to society and ultimately make a difference. So this research focuses a lot on South Africa's marine system that harbors natural resources that are largely underexplored and but now are potentially contributing to sustainable development of new drugs.
and we are part of a larger project known as the Algoa Bay project. The Algoa Bay project is a pilot project for the National Marine Spatial Planning Initiative. And this is where we are developing socioeconomic plans for developing the blue economy in a sustainable way. The Eastern Cape is a biodiversity hotspot. Every time we take the boat out and we go and do some sampling, we invariably find new species of sponges that we didn't know existed. The environmental work and marine science research that is happening in the Eastern Cape should no longer be a well-kept secret.